Caitlin Collins is the center of a firestorm of controversy surrounding former President Trump's appearance on the network this week. The host of ABC's The View had this to say about Collins's performance. That was an hour in. Um, I, I, I don't. It was think an hour. Second. That she was. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that she was um, prepared. Um, I don't think he should have been given a platform. I know. I was wondering when he was going to be fact-checked in real time. She did on the she very first question. Yeah, uh, well, I think she needed a producer in her ear, and I think we needed a Chiron. This is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. Um, that is That's right. what the media's job is. The media's job is to hold their feet to the fire and to get at the truth. Now, Colin facing backlash online after users pulled some of her old social media posts and media appearances, here is Caitlin Collins back from when she worked for the Daily Caller. Okay, so George Soros is this foreign-born left-wing guy who essentially wants to change the nature of our country. And in this data dump, one of the memos was about the refugee crisis. And they made three points. They think that they've been successful at influencing immigration policy across the world. They think that the refugee crisis is an opportunity to continue doing so. And they think the refugee crisis is the new normal. And George Soros is this guy who is a staunch advocate for open borders. He wants people to be able to go wherever they want, whenever they want, for whatever reason. And for him, he sees this immigration policy, this crisis, as a vehicle to further his immigration agenda. Interesting flashback there. Now, I want to inject a little bit of context into the situation because I actually worked with Caitlin at the Daily Caller, and wow. um, Caitlin started her time at the Daily Caller um, as uh, a reporter for what was called the Smoke Room, which is basically uh, part of the Daily Caller that makes these slideshows of hot women. <laughs> and there's one screenshot floating around of one of Caitlin's articles um, where she says something like, these refugees are seriously hot. Um, which is um, hilarious and awful, but um, she was uh, promoted eventually to cover the White House for the Daily Caller and then was poached by CNN. And my experience with Caitlin is that she's not a very political person to begin with, but she's very, very ambitious. So this is not surprising to me, this shift from sort of pointing out conservative talking points on Fox News to attempting to fact check Trump on CNN. Um, to me, this was probably the least shocking thing ever. And I'm also not surprised that she's getting backlash for her performance because she initially started drifting a little bit more towards liberal media after she was criticized for asking what was considered a softball question of Donald Trump back when she worked for The Daily Caller. So. That's whatever insight I can provide. Jessica, I don't know how you thought Caitlin might have done during that town hall the other night. Amber, I love that you're providing some inside information. That's a, a far more pro-immigration comment than what we just heard on Fox <laughs> from Caitlin. But um, yeah, I mean, Caitlin Collins has, I think you're right, this this vibe of like, I'm going to do the thing that, that furthers my career. She doesn't strike me as someone that's terribly opinionated. And I do think... It's interesting that whenever there's a moment where someone is in this position, where they do something that people who may have liked her fall in a different political faction than whatever side she's finding herself on now. I mean, saying that she's gave Trump softball questions or even doing and hosting the town hall was something wrong of her to do. I think now they're digging into her past and saying like, oh, well, it's because she's conservative and she has this agenda. I think it's much more obvious to me and it's a lot easier to understand what's going on when you have these big media companies, if you think, okay, where is the money? Who is motivated by viewers? Who's motivated by advertisers? Who's furthering their career along? It's pretty easy to tell the difference between someone motivated by dollars and someone motivated by values. And she strikes me as the former. Yeah, I think that's right. And she was kind of put in an impossible situation here. Trump is notoriously a very difficult person to interview anyway. I spoke to him on the phone for 15 minutes, and even then I got like maybe two questions in because he just monopolizes the conversation. He's known for steamrolling the people who are interviewing him. It's hard to get a word in edgewise. So even if she was there prepared to fact check him on every single point he made, I don't think that it would have gone over well either. And there's also a 
a possibility that he might not have even finished the town hall. I know they originally slated to have it for 75 minutes, and I think they stopped around an hour, or maybe it was 90 minutes and they stopped at 75. Either way, they cut it short because I guess it wasn't going quite the way that they planned. Um, but I also there's another strategy that some journalists take when interviewing Trump, which is to kind of just let him talk because he does kind of uh, tend to run on into dangerous places if you let him go unfettered. That was uh, what some of my colleagues did at The Daily Caller, and they ended up gar garnering a lot bigger headlines out of that than by trying to constantly fact check him. But overall, it's just a really difficult situation. And, you know, far be it from me to defend CNN, but I think that she probably did about the best that she could. Yeah. No, I'm not a fan of, of Donald Trump myself. Uh, I think he's a, a dangerous candidate, dangerous politician, someone we shouldn't have in public office. However, when I watch The View, whenever I, I listen to people who are liberals, who are who are elites, it rubs me the wrong way when it comes to political discourse, this kind of like holier than thou idea, this uh, idea that the everyday working class people in the United States are so severely uneducated and that's why they're making political decisions that are different from, from their own. I hate that. Uh, there are so many people in the United States that have become so apathetic with the government doing nothing to address their needs and doing everything to make this country a great place for big business who raise prices on us and lower our wages and exploit us and make the cost of living so terribly high that we spend so much time working for more money just to pay our bills and have so little family time. When you're in that position and you're only thinking about paying your bills next week, it's a little bit hard, A, to educate yourself on what's going on within the economy, within our political process, what's going on in government, but also see these candidates that have been in office for such a long time as people that could potentially help you one day when they've had the opportunity and haven't. And so when you speak about the audience at the town hall, when you speak about other people's political decisions in this manner, I think it creates a much bigger divide than if they were to just use their platform to say what they think should happen instead. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. And I know we both come from blue collar backgrounds. And so that perspective is yeah. not represented in media a lot. And uh, that's why like, I often find myself getting along better with Bernie supporters such as yourself, as opposed to establishment Democrats, even though I probably agree with them on more issues, because the sympathy and understanding and just comprehension of these kitchen table issues seems to be severely lacking among so much of the media. And you're right, there's so much condescension that comes from these view ladies. And not even just at the working class, but also this idea that Sonny Hostin could somehow jump into Caitlin Collins' spot and tag her out and do a better job interviewing Trump in this tenuous, tumultuous situation. Like the whole concept is just ridiculous to me. Yeah, that wasn't a, a respectful comment by any means. And the view was terrible to Bernie Sanders as well. Um, they were not kind to Bernie and made criticisms that were about how he looks, his demeanor, the rumors about him uh, not being supportive of women when he was running on a policy platform that would be great for women in the United States. And so, yeah, I'm, I don't know why the view frequently gets in the space of American politics. I believe they started off as kind of an entertainment news show. Uh, and I think it's weird when you go from celebrity gossip to trying to make substantive critiques of the, the media in the United States and the politicians that we have. And like we talked about already, I think if you're going to cover a town hall for Donald Trump, cover a town hall for every candidate running right now. Every candidate polling above, let's say, 10 percent would be a fine policy. And I think they would still find a way to criticize what CNN did by hosting this town hall but they would be uh, in a much more tumultuous place to criticize it uh, if they had to only criticize the Donald Trump town hall and there were many others. I think there is a substantive critique to be made. OK, where's the town hall for the other candidates running? Marianne, RFK Jr., Ramaswamy, give them all a town hall. I agree. And hopefully we also get some primary debates as well. Uh, I think. Uh, we pretty much agree on this, Jessica, that all of the candidates deserve more airtime so that the American people yeah. can make informed decisions. We'll be back with more Rising right after this.